On this video I'm going to show you how to draw something that looks like it's been vacuum formed with a dimple in the top, like a recess. So I'm going to go to File and do a new, and I'm going to do a new part drawing. And then I'm on the top plane, rather than any of the other two planes, which is the horizontal plane, I'm going to do a new sketch. Then I'm going to choose a centre rectangle, and the centre rectangle will allow me to start in the middle of the origin and draw a rectangle, which I can now tick. And then I'm going to dimension this so it's an equal size, and I will make that 150, and I will make that 150. It's not really sensible to type measurements into the menu on the left over here, because if you do that when you draw a rectangle, what happens is it does not lock it to those sizes, and you can stretch it out to size. At the moment, this rectangle can't now be stretched, it's locked. So try and use the smart dimension when you draw shapes to lock them to position. Now if I press Ctrl and 7 on the keyboard, it goes to an isometric view. You can also press the space bar, and if it doesn't do what mine's just done and a cube appear, it's because you haven't got this little button turned on here. So if I press the space bar now, it doesn't appear. I have to actually click on that and then it appears. And that's quite useful because it allows you to look at different views by just clicking on different corners of the cube. But I'm actually going to press Ctrl 7 and take it back to the middle. Now I want to turn this into a 3D object, so I'm going to apply a feature, which is on the top menu, and I'm going to do an extruded boss base, and I'm going to make that 15mm thick. And I just press the return, or I can click on the green tick. I'm then going to tick it to accept 15mm, and I'm happy with that shape. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round the corners, and I'm going to do that by going to Fillet, which is on this menu, and you have two options for fillet. You can either put a curved fillet on or a chamfer, which is like just a flat. I'm going to do a fillet, which is curved, and it brings up the menu asking me what size fillet I want. If I select the corners, it will automatically show me what they're going to look like. And then I can change that up and down either by just going up in tens, or I can type in a number in between. So I can select that number, take it to 15. And I can turn it to a partial preview. The reason it's showing them the previews is because it was already defaulted to full preview. And then I'm going to accept that. So I've got a nice shape there. Now, that hasn't got sloping sides, and if it was going to be vacuum formed, then if I was to look at this from a side view, these angles on the side would be leaning inwards. So I'm going to press Ctrl 7 again to go back isometric, and I'm going to go back to my boss extrude, and I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to edit that feature and I'm going to tell it to taper, and this is the taper command here. If I turn that on, I can taper that either inwards, or I can taper it the opposite way. Because it's a vacuum forming mould, I actually want to do it that way around. So I'm going to go to that angle, and I'm going to click tick. And you'll notice everything's updated, including the radiuses, and it now has a, an angle on the sides which is suitable for vacuum forming. Now if it was vacuum formed, it would also have a radius all the way around the top edge. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to put a fillet on, and instead of going around and collecting all the individual edges, I can just collect the top face and it will put a radius on. And you can see that's far too big, so I'm going to change that down to perhaps 4mm, and it just puts a fillet on the top edges. So I've now got a shape, I'm just holding the mouse wheel down and rotating it on the screen, and again I can press Ctrl and 7 to take it back. Now I could at this point make it into a plastic shell so it's hollow and I can do that by using the shell command which is on the features menu and it's over here. But to do that I need to click on the face I want to shell and that basically means turn it to a hollow shape. So if I go to shell it then asks me what face I want and it also asks me how thick I want it. Well I want it quite thin so I'm going to change that to 2mm. I'm going to turn the preview on, show preview and I'm going to then make sure it's chosen that face there. And you can see it's giving me a preview of what the thickness is going to be. If I change that up, you'll see it looks very different. And I'm going to go with a 2mm thickness, and you'll see then that it's turned that into a plastic shell. So it looks like a vacuum forming. Now, if I go back to the shell, and then edit the feature, if I shell outward, it basically shells on the outside of the shape, which means the shape I drew to start with could be my wooden mould, and then the plastic that is formed over it is bigger than the mould, like that. And the reason that's quite handy is because if I do the shell outward, and then I collect that, that's now a shell. If I save that, file, save as, 
I'm going to put that onto my desktop. I'm going to call it shell and save it. If I then get rid of the shell by suppressing that, which is this button here, suppress means turn it off temporarily. And I just update the drawing with everything. You'll notice then it's no longer a shell. It's now just a piece of wood, the former. So I'm now going to go to file and save as. And I'm going to call that former. Save. And then if I go to file and new, I can then bring in assembly and bring those two components in together. So I click on assembly and click OK. And because both of the drawings, well, one of them's open and one of them's closed, I can bring in the former first by just clicking on it because it's still open. And drop that on the screen. And you'll notice that moves to the side slightly. It then locks in place, so I can't actually then pick that up and move it. I'm trying to use a left mouse button and move it around the screen. It won't move. If I press Control and 7, it goes to isometric. But you'll notice it is still the solid piece. It's not the hollow piece. If I then bring in insert components and bring in from my desktop the shell, what you'll see is that that can go above there. If I go to a side view, you'll be able to see I can position that. And you'll notice it's bigger and it actually fits over the top of it. So I've got my wooden former and I've got my plastic shell. Now if I want to line those up I can try and use some alignment mates but at the moment I'm not too bothered with that. What I was going to do next was go back to just the shell component which is the top one and show you how to put the curves in the top for the marbles to sit in. So I'm going to just minimize that down. This one is the former. I've not actually got the shell open so I'm going to go to file open and open the shell. Now what I need to do here is I need to actually put the indents in the top before I do the shell. So I'm actually going to delete the shell. I'm going to right click on it and tell it to delete because otherwise the underneath of the indents won't show as plastic casing. They'll just show as a hole all the way through the plastic. And what I need to do now is draw a sketch that I can revolve and do a cutout of the material. So at the moment it's a solid shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of my other two planes, either that plane or that plane, and I will choose that one I think. So I'm going to go to the right plane and I'm going to do a sketch. Then the sketch is here, it's a new sketch. I'm going to click on that and tell it to go normal too, which means turn it to face me. And I'm now looking at the side view of the casing. If I then produce on the top of here somewhere, I'm going to do it in line with the centre because I want a pattern of nine holes. If I then produce something that is the same size as the marble, and I don't know what size the marble is, but let's say it's 14 millimetres in diameter, smart dimension it then that is where the marble will sit and if I want to sit it lower I can grab the circle and sit down as soon as it snaps to the line though if you drop it there it will stay snapped it will be difficult to move so have a think about exactly where you want it to be I'm going to keep mine in line with the center line and I'm going to drop it in about that far and what I'm then going to do is I'm going to draw a center line through there and I'm going to delete using my trim entities and I'm going to delete trim to closest I'm going to delete one half of it and the reason for that if I press control 7 I'm going to spin this curve around that straight line and tell it to remove material so I'm going to tick on the trim I'm happy with that then I'm going to go features I'm going to do a revolved cut now the cut wants to know the axis of revolution and the axis is the little line through the center so I'm going to zoom in and it guesses that the only other sketch is the curve, so it thinks I want to revolve a sphere. And if I click on yes, it actually cuts out the dimple because I've told it to remove material, not to add material. Okay. If I get rid of that cut extrude by right-clicking and deleting, the sketch is still there. If I go back to revolved boss base instead of revolved cut, then it asks me what I want to do. So if I take that line as my axis it's now going to add a sphere okay so two different features doing exactly the opposite of one another so I'm going to delete that because I don't want to revolve with a boss extrude I want to do the extruded cut so back to extruded cut I'm going to select that as my axis which is the first thing it asks me I've got the wrong thing though it's taken my sketch as well so I need to just make sure let's have a look for cut extrude it's not a cut extrude it's a revolved cut I chose the wrong feature 
There we go, that's now revolving the sphere. Click on the tick and I get my cutout. Now if I shell that now, you'll notice then when I shell that and I choose the bottom face, turn my preview on, you'll notice that what happens, shell outward, and I'm going to put a 2mm shell on there, click on the tick, you actually get the casing but you also get the dimple as part of the casing. And what I'm going to do, press Ctrl and 7, it will take me to isometric, I'm going to do a cross-sectional view using this button. And if I click on that, it gives me the option to choose any one of the three work planes and move the plane back and forth. I'll choose that one. And I can move that plane back and forth and see what my object looks through looks like in cross-section. And I'm quite happy with that. If I leave it there and tick it, I can press my spacebar and zoom in from this side. And you can see I've got a nice little curve and the plastic follows the shape. I can turn that off just simply by clicking on that button. I'm going to press Ctrl and 7 so you can see it happen. You just turn the feature off. So I've got my cutout, but actually I'm going to uh, suppress the shell because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually make a pattern of these holes. So I'm going to go to the top view, spacebar and the zoom and I'm going to tell it to do a pattern of these holes and there's something here called a linear pattern but it, I need to tell it what I want to pattern I actually want to pattern the cut revolve so I go linear pattern there are other kinds of patterns here I want linear pattern but it wants to know a direction so the first pattern I'm going to do is going in a straight line down here that is going the wrong way I can flip that or I can flip it I can change the spacing and I actually want three I want the first one plus two more that's probably a bit big, so I'm going to change that to 25, and that I think that's about right. Okay, So I've got a pattern going in one direction. I can also choose to go in a second direction. I need again to choose a direction line. It's not selecting for me, I'll just do that again. You can see there's a little arrow down here, so I now need to flip that to go the opposite way, and I want to go 3 and I want that number to match that number. So you can see I've gone in two opposite directions at the same time with my pattern. So I've got this direction one using edge one, which was over here, 25 millimeter spacing, three instances, and direction two, I've taken an edge, it can be any straight line, and that's again 25 millimeters and three instances. And I think it's gonna ask me to check this box here, so I'm just gonna try and tick it. Yes, it's saying something about the pattern seed only, do you want to proceed, yes. So I should have ticked that box and it probably wouldn't have given me that message. And then I've got my cutouts and I've got a pattern of them. Now I've got my cutouts in that direction, what I want to do is pattern them in side to side direction. So I'm going to go back to my linear pattern and this time for my direction I'm going to go on this axis. You can see the little arrow there pointing. I can flip that into either direction if I want to change it but let's see what happens. First thing I want to do is tell it what I want to pattern. So I've got that pattern is what I want to pattern so I can select that from the side I want to do a linear pattern and I want that linear pattern to go backwards first so there we go it's recognized my measurements from before and it's sort of guessed that's what I might want for direction 2 I also want to go the opposite way and I've you can see then it's done that I've got 25 and 3 25 and 3 I'm going to click on that box click on the tick and I've got my pattern of holes now, if I now do my shell, okay, so if I right click on that and unsuppress, you'll notice something strange has happened. And the reason for that is the shell was done before the two linear patterns. So I need to put that shell after the patterns. And on this program, it's quite clever, you can actually just move it. So it happens after the two patterns. And you can move it up as well. So you can move it so half the holes are showing. Okay, I'm going to move it all the way to the bottom as the last feature. And what you'll notice is I've got that perfect shaped shell. And again, I can go to a cross section, choose whichever work plane I want, and drag that back and forth and check if I've got what I want. I'm just using the mouse button to roll in. And you can see there, I've got a really nice feature with my vacuum formed casing. So I'm going to click on that, accept that, turn off the cross section, control seven, and I've got my plastic shell. And to add a plastic colour to that, I can go over to my Appearances button, the little picture here with the blue, red and green and yellow. 
I can choose appearances, I can choose plastic, and I've got high gloss, medium gloss, low gloss are the main ones that I would think about using. I'm going to use a high gloss and then I can bring in any of the colours from here and drag them on. I'll choose the blue, bring it over and drop. And you've actually got options. Do you just want to do the top face? Do you want to do the shell? Do you want to do the body? Do you want to do the, the whole product, which is called the shell? Well, I want to do the whole body uh, or the whole shell's fine. Uh, I'm going to click on that one and you'll see then it's all gone blue. Now at the moment it's not in its rendered mode, it's just in its simple graphic mode. So to make it look fully rendered, I need to go to SolidWork Add-ins and click on there. I need to click on Photo View 360 and it will add an extra grey tab along here. And the one it's just added is called Render Tools. If I click on Render Tools and I go to Integrated Preview and tell it to turn on Perspective View, it will then add a render using lights which will make it look glossy and like real plastic but it's still only a quick render you can see there it's looking quite nice it's just sharpening up around the edges it takes time to do and if I move that it will still allow me to move but it will take time then to re-render it each time I move it so it can take a long time if you're working with a render switched on especially on a slower computer so I'm going to turn that back off that goes back to the view it's easier to ha manage it and I can also go to my final render which will boot up an extra window and this is where it really does process the drawing a little bit better. Get rid of that one. And you can see there in the background I can change the zoom on that. That's just using the mouse button. I can zoom around a little bit. And then I can save the image if I cho chose to do so. It looks white along the front, but that's because of the reflection. If I go back and change the angle of the drawing, you can see there. I just close that one down. If I change this to a different angle, the shine will look different when I go back and I do my final render. I'm just going to get rid of this one here, which is there. You go. You can see the highlights have changed on that. Okay, and I can change that up to 100%. And I've got a nice shiny plastic casing. And that is the end of this video.